First off, thank you for your patience and hearing their stories. Uh, obviously, I hope that you take away that this meant a lot to them, uh, meant a lot to me. It's, I hope it means a lot to us. We're making an impact. We're making an impact around the world. And I know that many of us, including myself, we look right here sometimes and we see what's right in front of us. And, you know, problems get magnified in our own lives. And we all have problems. Nobody's minimizing that in this room. We all have issues and troubles and problems and things that come up. And they're real to us. And and if they're real to us, guess what? They're real to God. And God will help us. Let me say this. Going on a missions trip out of this house uh, does a few things. One thing it will do, and I hope I can speak this confidently as I look to these right here, I would dare say you'd be very, very hard-pressed to divide this group right here. I mean, these two sisters right here, uh, I don't even want to get into. They had a room together, and they, they are bonded now in a sisterhood that is beyond what you ever would have imagined before you left to go on this trip. Whatever we might have thought would be issues, God has a supernatural way of working some things out. And there's power. In fact, there's a bestowed blessing in the Word of God as it pertains to unity. There's a unity amongst this particular group that I desire for us together to have. You know, I so appreciate what God has done in this ministry you know, Keisha, you alluded to the alignment. See, a lot of times people see, well, you got Pastor Jason and Pastor Kim, or they're two different pastors. No, we're, we're two different people that are doing our calling here. And I get that everybody doesn't understand. That's okay. I'm not mad with them. But she's got a call. I've got a call. But we have a call together. But as I led, 99.8% of the time, they followed And I told them, by chance, that .02% of the time you don't, you're liable to see a bear come out in me. And as Jay said, fire was coming from my eyes. Jason, I'm going to tell it just like it happened. I said, Keisha, I ain't worried about you. I got to go home and deal with him. If I don't come back with you, I'm in deep, deep trouble. Am I right? Can I get an amen? Amen. I don't know. He's not amen. I don't know. No, I'm just kidding. I know. (laughs) But it was a great trip. It was was heartfelt. It was a lot of emotions, a lot of tears. Friends, there's three type of missions trips we do out of this church. There's an exposure trip. There's a missions trip. And then there is an expedition type of a trip. A missions trip is going to be when we're actively in the streets and we're looking to win the lost to to God. That's always, but I'm talking about very pointedly, we're out amongst people. You're going to see, you're going to have to deal with, um, you know, spiritual warfare, you know, casting out demons, those kinds of things. On an uh, on a um, Expedition, you're dealing with, you know, really hard terrain and things that are difficult and your places that you might be eating things that you just, oh my God, there's no way I can do that. But an exposure trip, which is what we were on, exposes you to what's going on around the world. And I would dare say that you've all been exposed to a culture and a lifestyle that broadens your wor- worldview and you begin to see things from an aerial position. Right? We begin to see things from up above as God would see it. And it changes you from the inside out. And there's things that happen that you cannot explain. You know, they had a very difficult time putting into words. Oftentimes you saw that there was just emotion that would begin to burst forth because that's what happened inside of them. I want to encourage you to come and be a part of future trips that we will take out of here because I believe over time, It's going to allow us to grow together in unity and to continue in our pursuit of one more soul. And in our one more souls that are one into the kingdom, then we're advancing the kingdom of God. One thing that I know is that when you get on a missions trip, one thing that begins to fade away, and that's all the little petty differences that we have concerning how we interpret Scripture. I'm certainly not minimizing the 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 need to properly and rightly divide the word of truth. We need to have that. 
But one consistent theme that you heard here is the love of God. Love triumphs over everything. We didn't, we didn't discuss and we didn't break out the Bible and, 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 and exegete Scripture together with these children. They loved on us and we loved on them. And the love of Jesus filled our atmosphere in such a way that all of us were significantly changed, changed for the rest of our life. I brought with me today a briefcase that my dad gave me when I went to work with him. My dad was a for lack of a better term, for some of you, the little older, remember the door-to-door salesman, and they, you know, would sell insurance policies. Well, my dad, you know, that, that particular industry has grown through the years, and he's a, you know, financial planner. He's, a, he's he oversees a lot of people's resources and monies as the banks got into the insurance world, and vice versa. He he began to really get involved. Well, this right here is special to me, and I didn't know. I hadn't even thought about this briefcase till this morning. And as I got into a time of prayer with with the Lord, I I began to just say, Lord, thank you for what you did. I don't know what you'll do today, but I know that you did something special in this group. You did something special in me. And I looked up on the counter, and this is dusty, and I pulled it down, and I remembered why I hadn't thought about it in a while because I hadn't been able to get into it. It's got a combination lock on it, and I forgot the combination. (laughs) So if you can tarry for another week, when you come back next week, we're going to talk about what's inside this briefcase because God gave me the the, the combination. There's three numbers on this side, and there's three numbers on that side, and as they were all scrambled, and I began to look at it, the Lord said, take them back to their foundation." So I took it back to ground zero, and as I put zeros across the board, click, it popped open. There's some things inside of this that I want to share with you next week. Thank you for being with us this week. I pray that something that was said will touch you, will challenge you, and I hope that you will leave out of here today unified as the body of Christ recognizing that there's differences down the road at that building and that building and that building and the hundred other buildings that will pass that we call ourselves the body of Christ. But if we can remember the foundation of love, then we can look at our brother and our sister in a place of business today or throughout our week, and if we'll remember that we can love them and receive love back from them, then God has a way of supernaturally handling all the little petty differences that we have. Y'all stand to your feet and let's pray. Father, I thank you for what you did in each one of these that are representing Victory Family Church on this stage. I thank you for how you spoke to us individually, how you've changed us from the inside out. You've taken us in some regard back to the foundation, understanding that love conquers all. And God, you so loved the world that you gave your only begotten son, Jesus, to die a death that was for us, that we might have forgiveness of our sin. Lord, I'm grateful for salvation. I'm grateful for the opportunity that lies before us. As we have breath to breathe upon this earth, not guaranteed tomorrow, may we be about your business in seeing one more soul come to know you as Lord and Savior. Before we close here today, I would give each one of us an opportunity in this room. Perhaps you heard some things here and you're like, you know, I don't I don't think I know Jesus like that. Maybe you've been around church. Maybe you've you've heard Jesus talked about and you believe he's real, but perhaps you've never repented of your own sin. Recognize that He died for you that you might have life and life eternal. Today's your day. If you're in this room or if you're watching by Facebook or on YouTube or some other way, can I encourage you that Jesus so loved you that he chose to die that you might be forgiven of all of your wrongdoing. Would you make him 
Not just your Savior, but would you make him your Lord today? If you're in this room and you'd like to make Jesus your Lord and Savior, would you just simply pray this with me? Father, I thank you for life. I know that you came to die for my sin, and I have committed many. Forgive me of my sin. Wash me in your blood. Jesus, I believe that you came, that you died, and three days later you rose again. And you did this so that I might have fellowship with you. Lord, I today want to make you my Lord and my Savior. Save me. Introduce yourself to me in a greater way that I might live for you. And I'll give you the praise and the glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Church, I love you. We appreciate you helping us get there. God bless you. We'll see you throughout the week.